Okay, hey everyone, this is Megan from Able, and I'm here with Paul Hawkshurst from Canon, and we're talking about all the new updates with firmware for the C300, C100, Mark II, and also the new lens and new cameras. We have so much to talk about. Yeah. I think the first thing we should start with <laughs> is the new lens. So Sounds good. What we have here is the Compact Servo 18 to 80, and this is the first lens in this series. That's so correct. Right? So one thing I wanted to ask you is, before we get started in the tech specs, is kind of the overall concept with this lens. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Canon kind of recognized that there was this void in the, uh, the servo zoom world. Uh, we either had these really expensive cinema servo zooms in the twenty, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 range. And then underneath that, we really didn't have anything. We had more, you know, very kind of consumerish uh, still lens that had some servo capabilities, but those were more down in the $2,000 range. But nothing to really appeal to that say like the amateur prosumer who wants to kind of get into the servo world um, but wants a higher quality, expects a higher quality lens, um, but doesn't want to, can't graduate up to the $30,000 true cinema lens. Um, so Canon recognized that and said, let's design a lens that really straddles both of those worlds. Um, and this is the result, the 18 to 80 compact servo. I think it's a great point too that it straddles both the cinema world and the still world. For yeah, it, it truly is kind of a, a hybrid, is what they like to call it. Right. So, so it's an EF mount lens. Is that e correct? Yes, EF mount only. Okay. So that's really important. And, and the po important about that a part about that is that um, the lens needs to be powered through the EF mount. Okay. So. And once it's powered through the EF mount, we get all the metadata through the camera with the metadata f stop, f stop, uh, yep, focal length. Um, now that it also activates all the dual pixel autofocus on the C300 Mark II and the C100 Mark II, um, as well as auto iris and some other uh, focus functionality. So, so as well as if you want to have it in manual focus, you can use the great focus assist functions. Yeah, and well. the C300 Mark II, the focus assist is also available if you uh, don't want to use autofocus. So. Okay. So one thing I also wanted to mention with this Compact Servo 18 to 80 is also the other lenses from Canon that it would pair really well with for users that already have invested in Canon glass. Uh, so I know it'll match really nice tonality with the Canon CNE primes. Yeah, that's right? correct. So it's uh, coating wise, it's you know coated in the same way that our cinema glass is. So it just comes in nice and, and warm. A lot of those characteristics that people like about our cinema lenses, mm -hmm. um, it fits right in with that. So and the focal range too, so it's an 18 to 80, it's a great, uh, great wide, good to a medium, good to a close up. And then yeah. also I was thinking with the CNE 135, you could get your long telephoto. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. It's a, it's a great complement to that kit, because uh, you have the 14 on the wide end, and then you have the 135 on the telephoto end, so right. you have almost the full, full length right there. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, and then so. if we compare it to more of the L series EF mm -hmm. glass as well, uh, you could also match it with the 24 to 70 L series. So yeah, I mean, focal length wise, it's obviously very, very similar to the 24 to 105 mm -hmm. um, and 2470 as well. But, uh, but you know, call to, uh, characteristics that it shares with the L series lenses are the USM motor, which is really helpful for the autofocus. It has image stabilization, and that's an internal lens image stabilization. Um, but it also has a 77 millimeter front diameter okay. as well. So. so that's nice if you already invested in the ND or polarizers yeah. that are 77 millimeter screw on, you could use that as well with this yeah. glass. Absolutely, nice. absolutely. Okay, and I um. notice it's also really lightweight, which is great. In for incredibly lightweight. It is uh, 2.6 pounds. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so good for a run and gun, also yeah. obviously for studio work. Yeah, and that was great because, you know, um, a lot of feedback when you get into the higher level of these Cine servo lenses, they tend to get um, pretty heavy because in order to to create the image circle that you need for Super 35 and to create all the servo functionality, you have to have some pretty big glass. So it's pretty amazing that they were able to compact this and still have that image circle. Right. Um, yeah, and keep the weight down as well. So. so we mentioned run and gun too. I think we should talk about the servo functions as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, the servo motors are built directly into the lens. Um, and this is great because we sell a optional uh, hand grip unit, which we can show over here. Now, uh, this hand grip unit, like I said, it's we sell it optionally, but um, it's connected via this 20-pin uh, Hiroshi connector here, directly into the servo unit. And then, if I was to remove it, I can actually move this hand grip around. So, so why don't we want to demo yeah, it? Yeah, let's do it. Demo it. All right, we have a screwdriver here. There we go. So if you wanted to remove the servo and put it onto a handheld rig for 
holding it off of the iris rods, you could do that. That's where I could see that really, really working. And then also your trigger would be there, wide zoom, telephoto zoom, right? <laughs> All right. So you can see the rosette on the inside here is the same as obviously on here, and also you could have it on the handheld rings. Yes, absolutely. So that's the great thing is that we've done it a couple times at the booth so far where we've been able to you know, move it to an extension, uh, a rosette on a rod, and have it more as a, a natural hand grip, um, which is something extremely unique in this, this Cine servo world. Um, but not only that, it's great because you don't have to use it. We have a, a built-in servo control on the lens. And on top of that, the C300 Mark II and the C100 Mark II, with the hand grip that comes with those cameras, you'll be able to use the joystick on that hand grip to zoom the lens. Um, so just a whole lot of functionality all around for the zoom. Uh, the 20-pin Hiroshi will give you access to focus and zoom demands as well. So if you're used to using it in the studio configuration, right. we can plug those in and use those as well. Um, I think it's absolutely. great that it will integrate with the handheld grip from the Yeah, too. Yeah, that's, that's really great. I mean, it's just, it, you really maximize the functionality of it using one of our cameras because you get the full autofocus and you get the zoom on the hand grip. Um, it's, it's really kind of an ideal situation right. to have all of those options. And as far as availability of this lens, we're looking at... Availability, what they're, what they're telling me is uh, sometime in August, no hard, no hard date yet, so, but that's what we're looking at. Okay. Yeah. We can put that back on there if you like. Absolutely. <laughs> this looks like a really great lens for handheld work. I can't believe it's barely uh, you know, under three pounds. That's pretty amazing. Uh, and then also, obviously, for studio work with the range, 18 to 80, and then you can get some primes for the long end or the wider end if you needed it. Uh, so I think that's what's really exciting about this lens is how you can match it with all the other Canon glass uh, with C100 Mark II, C300 Mark II, any of the cameras in the Canon line. All right. Great. Nice. <laughs> okay, so I think we should move on. Okay. One thing I want to talk about is the new camera. Yes, yeah, so we, at NAB we're introducing a, another new camera here. So we have the ME200 with us today. So that's the NAB 2016 announcement. Brand new announcement, right? Correct. So it is the ME200, and it's kind of the, the baby brother to the ME20, which we announced last year. So if you don't know, the ME20 was a full-frame sensor uh, ISO 4.5 million camera. Um, really unique camera and really meant for, it's kind of a multi-purpose camera. Um, so we're announcing this this year and it's kind of the, the baby brother to it. Instead of a full frame sensor, it has a super 35 millimeter sensor, a top ISO performance of 204,000, um, but it has full dual pixel autofocus in it. So you can see with the size of the body, you throw in a, a Canon lens you can use the autofocus and really stick this in a lot of crazy small places or hard to reach places. Now, the, the one caveat of all that is that we do need to run it to an external recorder. It's a 10-bit 422 uncompressed out to an external recorder, um, just like the ME20 was before it. Um, but, you know, that's a lot for surveillance, for security, for other studio situations. Uh, that's something that may not be such a And it has a time code as well. Time right? code, full, yep, time code. Uh, gen lock. You know, well, even the size necessary. of it. So the weight is also pretty light, right? The weight itself is very light. It's uh, it's about uh, two point three pounds. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So, and then based on the configuration too, essentially it's a box, right? Computer it's a box or? camera. Yep, Q camera has a twelve pin Hiroshi. So as you can see here, what we're doing is we're adapting a two thirds inch uh, ENG style lens onto it. So there's a couple different modes of teleconversion in it. Um, so that we can, can use that, the image circles of those lenses. Okay. Um, I can also see that camera being rigged in so many different places, right? We could yeah. do mobility, we could do car rigs. Exactly, exactly. Um, like for one, the ME20 before it, we have some of them rigged in theme parks because they like to, they need to check the, uh, what's going on in the roller coasters when they go into the dark. And so right. that's one of those things that I do. The M in the camera stands for multi-purpose. So it's really like, here's a camera and let's see what people do with it. And availability um, of this camera too? Um, coming soon, there's no again Hono Hard Street date. Okay. But I believe it's in that October range. So Great. Um, Thanks. One, Thank you. One more thing about actually I want to talk about this sure. camera is that the IR filter is removable in it. So you can do okay. some really interesting IR shooting. Um, well, that's with the camera. Yeah. yeah. That makes it even more multi purpose. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Definitely for creative functionality as well. 
So now what I want to talk about are all the exciting new firmware updates, because I think those are a lot of amazing things happening with the C300 yeah. Mark II and the C100 Mark II line. That's correct. So let's start with uh, the firmware updates are coming in the summer, is that correct? Yeah, uh, July 28th okay. for the C300 Mark II and C100 Mark okay. II firmware. And one of the biggest oh. changes I know that it's added is a new Canon log curve. Yeah, for the right? C300 Mark II, this is very exciting. Uh, we're adding Canon Log 3. Um, now, Canon Log 3 is its kind of a happy medium between Canon Log 2 and original Canon Log. It takes down to, from the 15 stops of Canon Log 2, we're going down to 14 stops. But exposure-wise, it acts kind of more like the original Canon Log. So a lot of people were really, really familiar and really um, just really used to exposing the original Canon Log. Right. So we've taken kind of, you know, more of the, the safe and the functionality of that, but expanding the dynamic range of it. Uh, so there's more highlight protection, but at 18% gray, you're still kind of exposing at the same place. So. Okay, that's really yeah. great for everyone that's learned to work with Canon Log, as you exactly. said, for understanding how to expose log. Exactly. That's really great. Yeah. And then it also would produce less noise. With the that is absolutely, okay. absolutely true. Uh, but also talking about that is that we're reworking the algorithm of Canon Log 2. Okay. So the firmware will basically rewrite Canon Log 2, and we've been able to reduce a lot of the noise, that, a lot of feedback we've got that Canon Log 2 was pretty noisy especially at the base ISO. So we're, bringing, we're reducing that noise quite a bit, and also some of the artifact, the CMOS artifacts that are inherent in all CMOS sensors. But because Canon Log 2 uh, exposes the, pretty much exposes the entire range of the sensor, right. um, you know, we're able to tone that down a little bit. Right. I think it's yeah. important that you said it's a happy medium between the two yeah. existing curves. Exactly. So that people can understand how to expose it, just like they did with the original Canon Log, yeah, but maybe absolutely. not quite as wide of a range right, exactly. as Canon Log exactly. 2. Exactly, yeah. For people, you know, because I think for Canon Log 2, people, the idea was that people were going to spend a lot of time in post working on it. And with the original Canon Log, it was pretty snappy, you know. People, you know and so Canon Log 2 is definitely this nice, like, still, Pretty snappy in post, but not have to put the work in, in ca not have to put in the work of Canalog too, um, but still gives me more protection in the highlights. Right. So. And we can look forward to other platforms and Canon releasing the cube lep files also to convert it for yeah. post production. Absolutely. So, so that'll be great to convert that into the workflow. Nice. Oh. And I know another uh, firmware update also incorporated more autofocus functions with so other Canon glass. We'll that is true. That. So the C300 Mark II and the C100 Mark II are getting uh, full dual pixel autofocus for the 17 to 120 Cine Servo lens, and as well as this 18 to 80. Um, but those firmware is also needed to add, incorporate the zoom functionality on the, the Canon joystick. So right. that's coming as well for the 17 to 120. You're right. going to be able to zoom from the hand grip. That's great. And then that means also the metadata will now come through to the on-screen display. Yes, that is correct. Right, so you can see your f-stop, your That's focal range. Metadata is coming through. Uh, full functionality the, on the 17 to 120, the 12-pin Hiroshi is going to be fully functional now. Uh, iris, starting stop, all the other things that we're kind of missing right. before are all coming to what it. What I so. think is most exciting about that is if you're working in the manual focus, the mm -hmm. focus functions of the C300 Mark II are really advanced. Yeah. So you have the face tracking it's Absolutely, face, face tracking, and then the uh, the focus, the, the powerful focus guide, is going to be right. really nice. So, and then um, that will also now work with the Canon Cine Primes. That is correct. So full, yep, full focus guide for the Cine Primes, which uh, is I was playing with the, the prototype version, and it's it works really well. So nice. it's kind of nice to have that. I think that also makes both of those cameras very versatile. And they already yeah. are, but you can work in a run and gun autofocus environment. Right. You can also do manual and do the push autofocus. Exactly. Correct? Exactly. Nice. So anything else with the firmware updates that you want to mention? Um, yes. Yeah, so one big thing, actually, and this is kind of funny because this was our number one feedback from the camera, was that we're we're bringing magnif magnification during recording back. Okay. So the original right. C300, uh, you can when you magnify the image, you can record and still be in magnification mode. Right. Um, and then due to some interesting feedback along the way, we took it out of the C300 Mark II. Um, but then the majority of feedback has been, please get it back. It back. So, right. so it's coming back. It's coming back So now, now. while you're rolling, you can push the magnify and check autofocus. And check all your quickly, exactly. And it gives you an alert, I assume, that tells you. It you're, tells you, okay. yeah, you're magnified. So you know that's not your friend. And it, that you're not actually recording right. that. So <laughs> Those are really great firmware updates. I think that's yeah. really amazing. So yeah, that'll be July 28th. July 28th. Look forward to that. Yeah. And that'll be a free firmware update from Canon. Exactly. All right, great. So. And now I know we wanted to talk about the firmware updates for the Canon 24-inch. Right, well. so the, uh, the, the DPV2410, it's, the, uh, it's our 24-inch reference monitor. 
um, which were that's we're, a gorgeous monitor. It's a beautiful monitor, yeah, absolutely beautiful. But uh, uh, one of the things is that that you know functionality wise, we're getting some pretty major updates. Uh, first of one is that the log C interpretation. Um, so we we've, right. we've worked with Ari to be able to display properly display log C on the monitor and to also be able to input Airy LUTs into the monitor. So you can go into the, the Airy LUT generator and create a LUT specifically for the monitor and then just input it into the monitor and do that. It's, it's amazing. Nice. Um, on top of that, we've added a split screen mode where on one side, you'll be able to see the image and log and the other side, the, the LUT. The LUT, okay. So you're able to compare directly on one screen. So in the field, yep. you can see what your color correction is doing to the exactly. image, as well as what you're actually recording. Exactly. Which is really nice. Yeah, and one and one important thing actually about the the DPV twenty four ten I want to talk about is this firmware update, is, in in, in parallel with this firmware update, it's now completely ASUS qualified. Okay. So that's a basically it's a it's not a certification. They're not calling it certification, but it's as right. close to a certification as what they're you know what we're going to do from the ASUS board saying that if you're doing an ACES workflow, this is the monitor to use. Yeah, that monitor yeah. is gorgeous. We have it in the Chicago showroom. It's really great. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I know at the Canon booth, you have a lot going on. You have a lot of other presentations, so definitely stop yeah. by the Canon booth. And Absolutely. stay tuned for more from Able City. Thank you.